We have another special guest for you today. Uh, Kevin Oliver is the Executive Director of Washington Normal and also sits on the National Board. And he's going to talk to you about the relevance of marijuana reform in the legislature and in law and what that means to us as business people. So thank you very much. Warm welcome for Kevin. Thanks, David. All right. Um, we've got a slide up, so I'm going to read most of my uh, speech here. My name is Kevin Oliver. I'm the executive director of the Washington affiliate of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. I also sit on the National Board of Directors. As Normal's founder, Keith Scroop, likes to remind people, I smoke pot and I like it a lot. Yeah! Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of with responsible use of uh, marijuana by adults. I would like to thank uh, the MGBA uh, for allowing me this opportunity to welcome you all to this newly budding legal marijuana industry. I would also like to thank David, Morgan, and Becca specifically for their time and effort in bringing this event to fruition. Um, next slide, I guess. Normal. Back one. Thank you. Uh, Normal was founded by Keith Strope after he graduated from law school in 1968 and began working for the Federal Consumer Product Safety Commission, a job which put uh, Keith in contact with consumer activist Ralph Nader, whose work inspired Street uh, to become a consumer group for cannabis users. Using $5,000 in seed money from the Playboy Foundation, Strope founded Normal in 1970. In 1972, uh, Normal filed an administrative petition asking that marijuana be rescheduled so it could be prescribed as medicine. This is probably the first lawsuit ever on the behalf of marijuana as medicine, and it was filed by Normal. By 1979, 11 states had adopted decriminalization laws, and almost 45 years later, the Normal brand has established a reputation for enormous goodwill. Normal is the marijuana is to marijuana consumers what brands such as the AARP and Consumer Reports are to other types of consumers. Normal is now blessed to have reform partners like the ACLU, DPA, MPP, ASA, LEAP, FAMM, VOTEM, etc. Uh, but none of these great reform groups are saddled with Normal's dual mission of not only working hard to reform cannabis laws, but to help the current victims of the prohibition laws as well. Next slide, please. Such as those arrested for cannabis, 700,000 annual arrests. We provide help and comfort to the 50% of workers who are still subject to drug testing and speaking for cannabis consumers directly, not in the abstract or because Normal simply supports good governance. Today, 20 states, including Massachusetts, have enacted laws to legalize me medical marijuana. As you know, voters in Washington and Colorado last year legalized the cultivation, sale, and use of cannabis, leaving uh, it to the states of uh, tobacco and, in the case of Washington, alcohol agencies. Uh, the daunting task of inventing, regulating, and taxing the country's first legal pot industry. Well, it's gratifying to see that many of the country's first uh, uh, people here tonight, and the, the tide is turning in favor of legalization after decades of personal and political toil. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done. A lot of scores to settle, too, at the federal level and around the nation. Uh, for example, of the more than three quarters of a million arrests for marijuana offenses made every year, African Americans are three times as likely to be arrested for pot as whites, and they're no more likely to use it. I look around the room. The arrest rate would be, if there was a black person here, he would get arrested for pot and we'd all go free 70% of the time. Just saying. Next slide, please. On a less serious note, uh, for those craving a Cheech and Chong moment, it just so happens that Tommy Chong is on the normal advisory board, as is actor Woody Harrelson, musician Willie Nelson, comedian Bill Maher, and Nadine Strawson, uh, president of the American Civil Liberties Union, as well as Andrew, who is married to the late Carl Sagan, and with the help of uh, Seth MacFarlane from Family Guy, has rebooted the Cosmos series. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the involvement of such high-profile activists brings added interest to normal. Uh, for instance, it's nice to be able to send Will and Nelson an email and give him a heads up that there's a normal t-shirt for him to wear at a concert in Puyallup. It happens every time he rolls through. It just seems that uh, everyone who knows what marijuana is knows what the normal brand is. 
uh, offering a perspective on more than four decades of grassroots advocacy for drug policy reform. Like other social justice movements of our time, such as the LGBT uh, rights and equal marriage, the story of normal, as documented in its records, both affects and reflects changing public opinion. Thanks to our executive director, Alan St. Pierre, uh, since uh, 2005, and executive director of the Normal Foundation since 1997, the archives of Normal, uh, the oldest and largest marijuana legalization organization in the country, are now housed in the University of Massachusetts Amherst Library Special Collections and University Archives. The hope is that dutiful Mass U grad students, as well as other interested minds, will plow through thousands of emails and reports to learn the genesis of the disputes, see the mediation process, and find out what happened that finally ended cannabis prohibition. And we're watching it right now. Normal's mission is to move public opinion sufficiently to legalize the responsible use of marijuana by adults and to serve as an advocate for consumers to assure that they have access to high quality medicine that is both safe, convenient, and affordable. Or excuse me, high quality marijuana. Next slide, please. Here in uh, Washington, I-502 realized Normal's mission, and we are witnessing the end of prohibition. Since the election of 2012, as you can see from the graphic, Americans' views on marijuana, have, legalizing marijuana, have changed dramatically, with a sharp intersection indicating an abrupt shift in public opinion in favor of legalization around the country and the world. Now, a lot of people ask, well, what the hell does Normal do? Everybody knows who they are. What was Normal's role in this change uh, in Washington and around the country and the world? Well, specifically speaking to Washington 502, around 2008, Allison Holcomb, the primary author of the initiative, uh, a friend uh, on our advisory board, and uh, of course head of the ACLU's drug policy uh, here in Washington, uh, went around and uh, lobbied some people at a conference in San Francisco, including Rick Steves and Keith Straub, among others and uh, started talking about the idea of legalizing marijuana. Uh, ultimately, the campaign became known as uh, New Approach Washington, uh, which normally, uh, which Normal wholeheartedly adores at the national and state level. Now, as a 501c3, we can, uh, we can endorse and affect uh, initiatives by process, but we cannot endorse uh, candidates. Normal's uh, political action committee arm, however, can and does endorse candidates with uh, both financial and uh, uh, media endorsements. Now, leading up to the election, as probably everyone who is in the industry as we know it knows, there was a lot of uh, local tensions. If you know me personally, uh, you're still my friend, no matter what happened. Uh, but uh, re regardless, I have confidence that everything is going to work out okay. Uh, Philanthropists put this together. The people who put the largest amount of money into 502, of the 50% of that money that came from Washington State, are not interested in making a dime off of prohibition. The people who put in a million dollars and half a million dollars, like Grit Steves and the River Sticks Foundation, uh, or even George Soros or Peter Lewis. None of those guys are interested in making any money off the legalization of marijuana. They did it simply to affect social change. And anybody who says any different, I would like to talk to you. And that's the reality of this. The, the people who gave the least money are some of the ones who have come out since the election and said they're gonna make the most money. We're gonna be the Philip Morris of marijuana. They didn't put a dime into the election. Maybe they didn't want to lose any money. I'm just saying, they, they, now that it's legal, they want to capitalize on it. So, uh, again, the people who put this law together were not interested in money. They were interested in being social sculptures and making better social policy. Uh, policy. Uh, it's a fine intersection, uh, as you can see, but that's okay. Uh, we're almost there uh, to that slide. That's, but as you can see, it's been a long time coming, but now that the, 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 the veil has been lifted, the seal's been broken, and the shot has been heard around the world, uh, legalization is here to stay. And hopefully it'll be a lot more liberal as it, as it moves out. I mean, we were the first ones. So, uh, along with Colorado, but, you know, let me talk about Colorado for a minute. I'm gonna go off script, I don't have any slides for this. So. Yes, Colorado came online quicker. If you know anything about Colorado, they had uh, medical marijuana in place 
uh, that was on paper, highly regulated. It already met the tenants that the DOJ wanted to see. Uh, you had to have fingerprints, you had to have monies, you had to have securities, you had to have everything that 502 calls for in Denver. You were also required to have 70% of your own marijuana grown by you if you were a dispensary. Totally opposite from 502 here. So when uh, Colorado legalized it, uh, they uh, only allowed this first year for medical dispensaries to come online because they'd already been licensed and they'd already been fingerprinted and they'd already been under surveillance and, uh, for the state, not criminal surveillance, but by the Department of Revenue, uh, <clears throat> to try to adhere to tight regulation. So Colorado kind of had a leg up on us there. They also got home grow with their legalization and that's cool. I mean, everybody should be allowed to grow pot if they want to. And eventually we will, just like alcohol prohibition ended in the 40s, beer prohibition and to brew beer yourself at home wasn't lifted until the 70s. So, I mean, eventually we'll get it. But getting back to Colorado, and they've got the home grows, they've already got dispensaries online. They also don't require testing of their product, and they also don't check where the money comes from. There's a reason Allison Holcomb has been flown all over the world since the election to talk to governments from you, you, uh, you get her, what was it? Hungary, well, who just legalized Uruguay, Uruguay. 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 Uh, yeah, she's talked to Uruguay, she's been in Europe, all over Europe, she's in uh, Vienna now, uh, Poland, um, uh, Greece, uh, everywhere. In fact, right after the election, and since then, I've been called by the uh, World Council, uh, World Affairs Council, two different times, they're an a, a arm of the State Department, to the Seattle City um, uh, World Trade Center, to talk to two different groups of Latin American officials. The first group, the first meeting, and these are closed off the record, so I can talk about it here. Uh, the first meeting was uh, uh, all elected officials, representatives, representatives to the president, secretaries from Argentina, Chile, uh, Brazil, Puerto Rico. Um, there's a few other, but there's six or seven states there. I don't have this written down. Um, but uh, the, it, was, it was really exciting. And, so, and they called me back, and the second time it was all law enforcement. And, and what I mean by law enforcement, it's like the special agent to the DEA for Colombia. Now she's a Colombian national and she works for Colombian government, but they're asking me, what just happened here? How can you guys legalize marijuana? With, you know, you can't do that. I'm saying, yeah, we can. Meanwhile, I'm hiding my Starbucks knowing that we get our beans cheap from them and, out, and caffeine used to be under prohibition as well. I felt really guilty walking into that room with a Starbucks. I'm just saying. I'm trying to kick the coffee habit right now too. But, uh, so, so getting to Colorado, Yes, they've got some, some good things on paper up front, but in the long run, it's going to take a more, con uh, it's going to take an approach that, do that does care where the money came from and does call for quality control of products. That's how legalization is going to unroll. Because, again, you don't want the money coming from European gangs or Asian gangs or South American gangs. You definitely don't want them competing with you here. No one does. So, anyway, the philanthropists funded this, and then the election night party happened, and everybody's phone was ringing at the same time everybody else was screaming. It was insane. And uh, I was just one of the many people who were getting contacted, you know, hey, what just happened there? We just heard something happen. What just happened there? And uh, since that night, I've been directing and managing media uh, that comes to normal, either through the national office or directly through me, and ask, what's going on in Washington? Who do we talk to? What, what's the culture been like in Washington? How did we get to this? Well, you want to know what the culture's like? Talk to my friend Vivian. You want to talk to law enforcement? Talk to Norm Stamper or John McKay. You want to talk to the person who put this together? Talk to Allison Holcomb. They just don't know. So I, 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 that's been part of my job is to facilitate the information and communication that has uh, been brought uh, on the world stage. It's been focused on Seattle. Uh, uh, like I said, through the, the State Department meetings is, and then what Allison's doing, and she's actually going all over the world. And they're not calling people from Colorado to do the same thing. And there's a reason for that, I'm not sure why. Uh, over 30 media interviews I've done this year. Uh, that's just the source ones, and they all go out three or four times, so you can call it 100, but that wouldn't really be, that'd be disingenuous. Uh, local to international, including unprecedented coverage of the Stoner Bowl, which got me on the Today Show with Rick Steves, in a segment between Rick Steves and Jimmy Fallon. That was cool. Uh, but because of legalization, the cannabis industry right now, right where we are today, 
is currently at the intersection of social policy and social, uh, excuse me, public policy and social policy issues. We have, you've arrived, I mean, things are changing very quickly. Um, but cannabis does not legalize itself. This didn't just happen by accident, and it definitely didn't happen overnight, so please support normally. We don't have anything to sell. We're just a non-profit legalization group. Now, bringing cons uh, bridging consumer advocacy with the cannabis industry uh, is something that uh, we've been talking about for a while, sans legalization. Well, now that it's here, and by the time we're selling products legally here in Washington, and in the, in the same time, Colorado will probably be bringing on more and more licensees because again, currently only their medical licensees could, could uh, play the game. Uh, we're going to be offering kind of like an AARP stamp of approval. Uh, we'll be soon introducing the Normal Business Partnership Network seeking to create mutually beneficial partnerships with populated businesses who seek to use their enterprise as an example of corporate social responsibility and a platform for any marijuana prohibition. What are the benefits to a business owner to be associated or affiliated with Normal? As additional retailers and entrepreneurs enter this emerging industry, it's going to become very difficult, very difficult to set your business apart from other similar businesses. How is anyone going to know your brand is any better than the other brand when no one has ever heard of any of you outside of the 100,000 medical marijuana patients who may or may not shop at the dispensaries where your products are at? And it's not just about packaging, because the guy coming in from the, the retail market who's bringing his retirement money to play, he can afford better packaging. What is going to set your product apart if it's not already knowledge from the consumer, which it isn't in the retail market? There's no better way to stand out than to have the normal name and reach behind your product and entity. Normal's the most established, trusted, and most recognized marijuana advocacy group in the country and the leading defender of cannabis consumer rights. The organization is a cultural and political staple that is trusted by journalists, politicians, consumers, and the general public, Greater Seattle, definitely alike. Even around the state, our support is just, it's really it's unprecedented. As such, an endorsement for normal for your entity or product will prove to be a valuable investment for your business. Your business will gain a competitive advantage by displaying a normal logo or seal a logo for exclusive use only by normal business members and partners. Some of the things we want to address, and again, we're not ready for prime time yet, but uh, we will soon be, is a, is a more pro a, a positive brand image that you're going to act as good corporate citizens and build corporate loyalty. You're not just in it to, to sell weed to kids. You're not just a, a, a gangster who wants to sell weed. You know, you're not going to be affected by those stereotypes if you, if you can prove to people that you are really a socially responsible citizen. It, it, that could translate into expanded market share for stores, products, and other brands by enhancing their social, your social value and expanded visibility. A listing on the normal website with, uh, well, try Googling anything marijuana and not having normal come up is, is really valuable. We've got an Alexia ranking of 12,000 in the United States, 52,000 worldwide, and uh, our social media work networks reach over a million people. So. If you associate your product with a brand like that, if a business is carrying the normal seal, it means normal has determined that the business meets certain certification criteria, including you're using your business as a tool for positive social change and you've made a commitment to help legalize marijuana around the country. And you're willing to advocate for social change. You'll show a commitment to extraordinary practices that benefit workers, consumers, communities, and the environment. In other words, you'll go above and beyond, and you want people to know you're going above and beyond. And this is one way to do that, by identifying with the most recognized brand in marijuana. Some potential criteria for a retailer would include you know, offering discounts to veterans or disabled. That's not called for in 502, but if you do that, that makes you a better person. Fair pricing, you know, you're not out to gouge anybody. Of course, great customer service, you don't want any complaints. And uh, what kind of variety do you offer? Or are you, a, you specialize? For producers and processors, make, again, this is a bigger issue in Colorado where tests are not mandatory, but you know, to advertise with pride that your products are, are, are tested, exercise, 
exercise uh, restraint in packaging. In other words, make sure that a child can't get into it. Even if the state doesn't really say you have to have a child-proof bottle, make something that is a little nicer than a plastic bag, a little easier. And just, again, for perception's sake. Uh, if you're into uh, food products, make sure that they uh, uh, have addressed dietary restrictions of a diabetic, if they can't have sugar, uh, list the nutritional facts, if it's an organic or gluten-free or edible options. And I'm, I'm sure you'll see a lot more of uh, these types of things coming down the pike from the LCB because they really want to make sure that our industry has best practices anyway. But it does get back to setting your product apart from the guy next to you on the shelf. Uh, it'd be nice if you met environmental criteria we offer recycling of your own products, uh, you manage your wastewater well, you're just a good neighbor, dedicated to social change, uh, committing to uh, sponsoring, uh, fundraising such as this. It uh, would really maybe be more focused towards law reform, but, uh, and, and diversified hiring practices. If you hire uh, someone with a criminal record, that's a good thing. If you hire a minority, that's, a, that's an even better thing, especially if they've got a criminal record, you know. Uh, again, just embrace the, the broader community that you're now being accepted into. Uh, we can assist with sponsors, community building events, uh, actively supporting teen prevention campaigns, carry literature on the principles of responsible use for adults. I guess next slide. Please. Next slide. All right, the principles of responsible use. Uh, this is something that anyone who uh, really wants to set up a best practice uh, and offer a, 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 a ingestible or smokable product uh, that your producer or retailer should consider. It's something the board put together a while ago. Uh, we've adopted uh, the principles of responsible use. Next slide, uh, please. When, uh, when cannabis is enjoyed responsibly, subjecting users, of course, to harsh criminal and civil penalties for, provides no public benefit and causes terrible injustice. For reasons of public safety, public health, economics, and social justice, the prohibition laws should be repealed to the extent that they don't criminalize responsible use. So, adults only, right? I mean, cannabis consumption is for adults only. It's irresponsible to provide cannabis to children. And you definitely don't want to market your product like you're marketing the kids. Kids don't drive cars. Kids don't do a lot of things. And, you know, most kids don't drink, smoke cigarettes, do things adults do. Uh, next slide, please. No driving. Now, getting back to the source of contention, we didn't ask for a DUI. Nobody did. Nobody wants one, but uh, we got one. Uh, a limit, at least, which turns out has let more people off the hook than it's arrested, even with an increased number of blood draws. Uh, but no driving. The responsible cannabis consumer does not operate a motor vehicle or other dangerous machinery while impaired by cannabis. Again, getting back to Cheech and Chong, and Tommy Chong, who, again, is on our advisory board, will be the first to tell you that. The Cheech and Chong stereotype did a lot more to hurt legalization than actually push it along because that's the kind of stereotype people see. The guy rolling down, rolling a joint with both hands while he's driving, you know, and it's just, that's not what we want. You know, don't have your dad break in your lap while you're driving a car. Just, you know. So, but we want to promote these things for you to say, I'm a partner with Normal and we support these, these types of, uh, criteria for, for better social uh, policy. Set and setting, next slide please. The responsible consumer user will carefully consider his set and setting, regulating, using accordingly. You know, now that it's legal, you don't have to continue to rebel against the man and blow smoke in his face when you're walking down the street in Seattle. Uh, you know, because we're not done fighting this yet and they'll take every chance they can to talk bad about us. Uh, next slide please. We want to resist abuse. Uh, use of cannabis to the extent that it can impair health or is an impairment to personal development or achievement uh, is abuse. It, not that cannabis is necessarily harmful, but you can abuse anything. And just be, resist that and be responsible with cannabis. Be, be proud of your cannabis use. Don't, don't hide in the closet and use it to try to self-destruct. Uh, next slide, please. And, and finally, res respect the right of others. A uh, responsible cannabis user does not violate the rights of others, observes the accepted standards of courtesy and public proprietary, uh, courtesy and private property, that's what I think we need to say, and expect, uh, respects the preferences of those who wish to avoid cannabis entirely. So, again, we've come a long ways, 
and uh, we need to maintain, we need to build on it, we need to be responsible adult cannabis users. And again, with the normal business partnership, you will be conveying that message to customers from day one over your competitors if you have that seal of approval. All normal business partners must fulfill all of the licensing and bonding requirements of applicable jurisdictions, provide all licensing and bonding information upon request to verify, and uh, periodic updates of how business is going and making sure that you're free of any kind of government action that would demonstrate a significant failure to support normal principles in marketplace transactions. This requires a determination as to what you know caused the violation. Was it an accident? You know, are you, you know, have you been broken into? Have you been lying on your taxes? Have you failed to renew your license? Are you growing more than you're supposed to, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and on our customer preferences, businesses agree to respect customer preferences and make a good faith effort to resolve customer complaints and issues. In other words, so this joint you sold me isn't the Blue Daddy, Kush, God, Thunder, Fuck, Pussy, whatever that name is, that, uh, that I bought, and you, this, is, this, is my, this is Mexican weed, we'll know it is. And you know what, you know, the customer's always right type of thing. We're, we're, this is gonna be a real retail store now. Uh, and don't, be, don't avoid involvement by the business or its principles in activities that reflect unfavorably on or otherwise adversely affect the public image of, of normal, which again reflects on yourself as a business partner. You don't want to do anything that reflects negatively on you. You reflect on the industry. And again, that's kind of what normal has been for 45 years since Keith's experience with Ralph Nader is more or less a watchdog group on public policy and social reforms of marijuana. I'm almost done, I think, a little ahead of time. Uh, the normal brand, go ahead and make the last slide, I guess. So, <laughs> keep it at home. Uh, but uh, the normal brand has established a reputation for enormous goodwill. Normal is, again, to the marijuana consumer with brands such as the AARP and Consumer Reports or other types of consumers. Support normal is a way to demonstrate your commitment to providing a quality product or service to consumers. And if you love and appreciate what cannabis has done for your, in your life, like I do mine, then please give back to this most remarkable plant. You can't literally donate to the plant and donate to Normal, who's the embodiment of such in our lifetime. If you love ganja, you've got to love and support Normal because our sole purpose to exist is to support the plant and its faithful consumers, you and I. Thank you.